Hey, I'm Jeff Haynes from Tech Bargains, and this is the video review of the Dell XPS 14 Ultrabook. We've been saying for some time now that the Ultrabook is one of the hottest trends in the computing world today, and there are plenty of promotional terms being thrown out to capture the attention of consumers that are looking to get their hands on a brand new machine. Everything from the best performing laptop to the most elegant system, and even budget-friendly computers are being used to describe these thin, stylish, and powerful laptops. Dell's recent entry into the Ultrabook category happens to be the XPS 14, a system that promises to maintain the performance and quality standards set by the XPS line. The obvious question is, does the XPS pedigree actually make this system the ultimate Ultrabook? Here's what we found out. The XPS 14 that we reviewed was powered by a third generation Intel Core i5-3317U dual core processor running at 1.7 GHz that can be boosted up to 2.6 GHz via turbo. It came with 4 GB of RAM and was supplemented by both Intel HD Graphics 4000 and an NVIDIA GeForce GT 630M video card with 1 GB of graphical memory. The system came with a 500GB hard drive spinning at 5400 RPM, as well as a 14-inch LED backlit HD Plus Corning Gorilla Glass display with a native resolution of 1600 by 900 Rounding out some of the specs of the system were Bluetooth 4.0, wide eye capability, Waves Max audio speakers, HDMI and mini display ports, and two USB 3.0 ports with one port always on. Now the first thing that we thought about the XPS 14 was that it was a very solid and very heavy system. It was definitely heavier than what we're accustomed to from other Ultrabooks, but we thought that the balance of the system was well handled and it provided a rigid, non-flexing chassis for the laptop. The XPS 14 itself has an understated design created from machined aluminum with a matte finish and subtle textured pattern. The aluminum lid provides a thin bezel for the display as well, which contrasts with the magnesium keyboard deck and the black silicone bottom of the system. The overall look manages to not grab a ton of attention, but it will easily fit into any location, whether you're at a coffee house, a boardroom, or a classroom. We found a number of elements included with the XPS 14 to be a pleasant addition to the Ultrabook. For example, we liked that the laptop had a backlit keyboard with multiple levels and inactivity shutdown settings. This is something that we've come to expect with premium systems, and it's nice to see it on this particular laptop. The same can be said about the addition of an always-on port with the inclusion of USB 3.0 on the computer, as well as Wi-Di, Wi-Max, and Bluetooth 4.0. Now, not everyone will use these features, but having them on a system are a large bonus. During our tests, we noticed that the machine was incredibly quiet. In fact, we found the fan didn't run very loudly or very long at all, and when it did turn on during light sessions, the noise was only a mildly faint whoosh. We even found that the sound of the fan at high speed when the system was under load wasn't very noisy, which is always a great thing. By contrast, the sound and audio of the XPS 14 was rather good when it was turned up. Although you won't find power that'll make walls rattle or roll to the beat of your songs, or vibrate for movie impacts, it will still provide good sound, which can be further adjusted and tailored via equalization profiles. We discovered clean, crisp sound from the speakers from the low, mid, and high tones, albeit with a limited amount of bass, making these great speakers for entertainment. We were also pleased by the utilities found on the XPS 14, which was primarily anchored by the support center hub. This gave us access to system diagnostics, software info, and system configurations. We could also efficiently back up and restore the laptop within 23 minutes through this program, which is always a feature we like to see. Even better was the fact that there was a minimal amount of bloatware on the laptop. The only pop-ups we consistently noted were alerts about backing the machine up either locally or to the cloud. That's a great job considering most of Dell's competitors come packed with software packages. So what didn't we like about the Ultrabook? Well, the performance felt a bit hit or miss given our tests. Now we noticed that the processor received a 6.9 on the Windows Experience Index, which was backed up by the fact that it handled lots of multitasking, like multiple browser windows, numerous streamed videos, as well as color conversions of multiple files in Photoshop and spreadsheets in Excel. On the other hand, the inability of being able to set the NVIDIA GPU as the only one for the system to recognize resulted in a disparity of two points on the index scale between Windows Aero and 3D-enabled visuals. Plus, cold boot times for the laptop were on average around 40 seconds or so, which is definitely on the slower side of the Ultrabook currently on the market. 
Something else about the XPS 14 that isn't typical of other Ultrabooks was the weight. As we mentioned earlier, most Ultrabooks are relatively light systems, but the XPS 14 comes in around 4.6 pounds, which is rather surprising. There isn't an optical drive on this laptop, which usually adds a lot of weight and reduces the charge of the battery during use. Also, while we thought that the display was striking considering the Gorilla Glass, it actually wasn't the best display during use. As you moved away from center of the screen horizontally, it got darker and darker. Vertical viewing angles were much worse, thanks to its glossy screen surface, so getting the right tilt for the screen was vital to seeing a good image. We also noticed we had to spend a lot of time calibrating screen brightness, contrast, and gamma levels to get black levels and skin tones accurate. And even then, we found that the screen showed lots of banding in both horizontal and vertical planes with color gradient patterns. We know it's not a laptop specifically being targeted at graphics professionals, but the XPS 14 is one of Dell's higher-end Ultrabooks. So we'd have to point out that for graphics and photographic work, the display might not be what those users are looking for. Finally, one of our last issues, which may seem minor to some, is that the trackpad is just a bit too large. Now, typically we like larger trackpads, but the one on the XPS 14 is wider than the space bar and almost a third of the whole wrist deck, which can increase the chance that you get accidental wrist touches during use. Even with significant adjustments, we still manage to get some wrist clicks, which is unfortunate. Now, don't get us wrong, we like the smooth and the sensitive nature of the trackpad, which responds to the lightest touch, but the size of the surface can make this a double-edged sword. The Dell XPS 14 was a well-built system that was pleasantly free of bloatware, it had lots of advanced features, and it was whisper quiet during use. Unfortunately, we found a lot of miscues and issues with the display, somewhat hit or miss performance from the CPU, the system was also rather heavy for its class, and it could be sometimes very slow. Now, the pros and the cons of this system managed to give us the impression that this laptop happened to be somewhat middle of the road, which is why we decided to give the Dell XPS 14 a 3.5 out of 5. For the latest coupons and deals on systems like the Dell XPS 14 Ultrabook, be sure to go to techbargains.com slash Dell. To enter our monthly giveaway, make sure you always check out techbargains.com slash YouTube. And to watch our video unboxings, video reviews, and exclusive video features, be sure to go to techbargains.com slash videos.